let us pray precious father the entrance of your word gives light breathe upon your word let there be light there is a spirit in us and it is the inspiration of the almighty that gives us understanding so give us understanding precious lord we pray and we thank you lord for doing it for in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen and amen hallelujah we are going to be dealing with one of the questions that had been thrown in my direction some while back we have loads of people that have been brought up in the lord in a different way they've been taught that the days of miracles have ended they've been taught that you know there's no longer the manifestations of the supernatural and so they resist it with everything that is in them today as the internet has provided an alternative space for us to get information and sometimes also to get spiritual nourishment as the internet has become like that a lot of people have not learned how to question the authority of the source that they are accessing on the internet just last week i saw a very um prominent global pentecostal evangelist who was talking about the holy spirit and he said the proof of is an evangelist who likes to teach let me just put him that put it that way that's the way I, I would describe him an evangelist who likes to teach he says the proof of the spirit being upon you is not talking in tongues the evidence of the holy spirit being upon you is not talking in tongues the real evidence of the holy spirit upon you being upon you is the manifestation of power so miracles signs and wonders and all of that that's the proof that you have the holy spirit on you and then an evangelical person goes on facebook and they all say it with such authority like they know i am the world's number one authority on the holy spirit he goes and says the evidence that the holy spirit is upon you is not speaking in tongues again it's speaking in tongues they are attacking he says it is the fruit of the spirit that the evidence that the holy spirit is upon you is the fruit of the spirit and then you turn around and go and another person comes and speaks with all authority and he's a global you know um, reformed preacher he says the holy spirit has given us to continue his work on earth so the evidence that the holy spirit is on us is that we know the word of god well let's find out what the bible says hallelujah the first thing i'd like to point out is that the bible actually separates the two ideas from one another there is the holy spirit upon us and there is the holy spirit in us and this is where a lot of people get things confused because the assumption is holy spirit is holy spirit so they they would ask you do you have the holy spirit well the question is do i have the holy spirit in what form do you have what act or interaction of the holy spirit for example i'm carrying this bottle of water and this bottle of water has water in it am i right but it also because of condensation has some water around it and you can see it dripping around my fingers i can't contact the water inside it but i can contact the water around it is somebody getting what i'm saying the water in it is like saying the holy spirit in you the water that is all around it
Hallelujah. <laughs> it looks like the people online haven't been hearing me for quite a while. <laughs> so we're talking about the Holy Spirit inside us. Yeah, somebody just, Pastor Martha said it. He said the sound seems to have a problem. It's not the sound, it's me. <laughs> I switched off the mic in my excitement. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thanks, Pastor Martha. Thanks for pointing it out. Hallelujah. So, the Holy Spirit within us is the Holy Spirit dwelling within, or the Holy Spirit to be on the inside of, or the Holy Spirit to be in the bowels of the inward parts of the belly the bible says or to say to ingest into ourselves the holy spirit in the heart of the inward parts of or in the midst of this is according to strong's exhaustive concordance ezekiel chapter 36 says verse 26 it says a new heart also i will give you and a new spirit i will put within you and i will take away the heart of your flesh and i will give you an heart of flesh sorry and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you an heart of flesh and look at what it says in verse 27 and i will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Now, I want you to notice it was speaking in future tense. I will, I will, I will. When was this written? This was written to Ezekiel, which means it was the Old Testament. So from the point of view of the Old Testament, it was talking of the future that was to come. We are that future. We are the new covenant. Jesus says that he's the mediator of a new and better covenant hallelujah so while ezekiel didn't see it, jeremiah didn't see it, daniel didn't see it, david didn't taste it moses could not touch it but you and i are living in it so everything he was saying i will i will i will we can say he has he has he has hallelujah so i'll say it again a new heart he has given us and a new spirit he has put within us he has taken away the stony heart out of our flesh and he has given us a heart of flesh he has put his spirit within us somebody say the spirit within us he has put his spirit within us how do we know that we have the spirit within us we know because we are able to walk in his statutes the power to live right the power to serve god that which the unbeliever and those living under the law the bible says the law brought condemnation because it never supplied the ability to live up to god's statutes it only showed us what the violations were. But in the new covenant, he's not demanding from us. He's actually supplying grace to us so that we are able to walk in his ways. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? He will put his spirit in us. And now, or he has put his spirit in us. Now he is able to cause me to walk according to his desires and his statutes now i can keep his judgments and do them i'll never forget what my life was before jesus came into my life before i received the holy spirit in my life i was involved in every kind of vice i would smoke i would drink i would party i would do it at an addictive level I, I was in university and I, I had lecturers that didn't even know if they were male or female because I didn't go to class. Any lecturer who had a class with me on Monday morning, I didn't see because I was hungover Monday morning. I couldn't get out of bed till at least 12 noon, so I didn't know my statistics teacher. I had no clue whether I was male or till this day, I don't know. you wonder how i passed i collected notes from my classmates photocopied and read and read and tried to make sense out of it 
Is there somebody hearing what I'm saying? Don't, don't try this at home. <laughs> don't try it. I wasn't smoking sticks of cigarettes. I was smoking packets and cartons of it. It was that bad. I studied architecture and we were deceived into thinking somehow cigarettes kept you awake. Maybe it's just having something in the hand or whatever it was, but we did that. And I would buy in packs and bales. And then I gave my life to Christ. I asked Jesus to come into my life and everything changed. I had the largest jazz collection on the campus of Amadou Bello University. I had all kinds of jazz music. Most of them was declaring iniquity. Touch me baby, kiss me baby, and all of that. That's all that was in, in it. But then Jesus came into my life. I received the Holy Spirit inside my life. And everything changed. I mean, you couldn't convince me to stop listening to jazz music. But when I gave my life to Christ, nobody said a word to me. As a matter of fact, some of the Christians who came around were like, what happened to your music? I said, I threw it away. They said, you did what? They said, that could have cost you a lot of money. I said, I know. I ripped all the cassettes and they were chrome cassettes. You know in those days where you had chrome and then normal, chrome and metal cassettes, ripped all of them to pieces because it just didn't agree with my spirit anymore. I didn't stop smoking gradually. When I said yes to Jesus, that was it. I know a lot of people have problems with that, and it, but once I said yes, that was it. Why? I have the Holy Spirit inside me. It changes everything. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? That may not be the experience of everybody because Jesus will move into your heart and he begins to clear out things. I mean, of course, there were things that it took me time to get rid of. For example, I was very picky and very particular. When you entered my room, being an architectural student, everything looked like a mess. But it would look like a mess to you. It wasn't a mess to me. And I could close my eyes and I know exactly where to find my point five pen. I knew where to find my point one pen. I knew where to find tracing paper, cutting sheets. I knew exactly where to find the one that is in rolls. I knew where to find my copy of Newford. I knew everything. It was all positioned specifically to my specifications. And one day somebody came to work in my room. We often do that. We group together. And this person, I fell asleep. This person was working and worked, worked late into the night and then left. Hmm. Before this person left, they decided to tidy up my room for me. So in the morning, I opened one eye, I closed it quickly. Something is not right. Then I opened the other one. Then I opened, I said, no, I must be in another room. Ah. But I've stopped drinking. You know, in those days of drinking, you, you wake up wherever. I slept again. I said, maybe this is a bad dream. So I slept again to wake up, open my eyes, and I looked. I saw the door. This is my door. I looked around. No, this can't be my room. Then I looked. Then I looked. The hanky I will first pick here to remove River Niger, River Benue, it was no longer there. Hey, I wanted to drink water. Even the position of my fridge had shifted. Somebody tidied up my room. So I stood up for a while, then I started laughing. I laughed and laughed and laughed. I must have laughed for about five minutes. And then my laughter turned into tears. I started crying because I realized something. I started crying. I started weeping. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Not because my room is tidy, but thank you, Lord, because the me of before. If anybody dared to do that, I would have been so angry, so upset. I would have gone and looked for this person and told him or her off. Well, who sent you? Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you wanted to leave, you could have told me, why should you this? Why should you that? And I realized that I had changed. 
that wasn't the day I gave my life to Christ. I'd given my life to Christ. This was a couple of months after that. But the Bible says, and be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what the word of God says. So I realized I had changed. I had genuinely changed. So I jumped up, ran to this person's room. And I was like thanking God all the way. When I got there, gave this person a very warm hug. Thank you, thank you. The person was like, what happened? What did I do? I said, I've changed. He said, then why are you thanking me? I said, because you showed me that I have changed. Is there somebody here what I'm saying? I will cause you to walk in my son. Anger was no longer a part of me. Chronic irritation, uncontrollable irritation. It was no longer having a hold on my character. I said, God, thank you that I'm changing. Is this making sense to someone? Hallelujah. Some of us will change in one day. Some of us will change in five years. The good thing is that we change. If we yield to the work of the Holy Spirit in us, within us, hallelujah. Now look at John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and he, the Father, will give you another comforter. This translation, NLT, says another advocate, another stand by you who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit which leads you into all truth. The world cannot receive him because the world isn't looking for him and the world doesn't recognize him. But you know him. Who is you? Me and you. Am I right? But you know him. Why? Because he lives with you and shall later be in you whose words are these they are the words of jesus am i right yes. who was jesus speaking to he was speaking to his disciples had jesus died when he said this no so in other words technically this is still old testament even though it's in the book of john the new testament came into effect when jesus died and rose again it says no testament comes into effect until the death of the testator so even though we have matthew mark luke and john as new testament they are actually the introduction into the new testament but they are technically the old testament so when jesus was speaking in future tense he says he lives with you in the old testament they had the holy spirit with them but they couldn't have the holy spirit in them until they gave their lives to Christ until the New Testament was effected. That's why Jesus says, and later shall be in you. So I was telling John, you have the Holy Spirit with you now, but the time is coming when you will have the Holy Spirit in you. Hallelujah. And he says the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit in them. They can't. Hallelujah. The world cannot. So every unbeliever does not have the Holy Spirit in them. That's one of the things that marks us apart. Let's look into the next one. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 22, uh, 21 and 22. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 21 and 22. It is God who enables us along with you to stand firm for Christ okay I was wondering what happened what was the drama hallelujah it is God who enables us along with you to stand firm for Christ he has commissioned us us now talking about the apostles or the ministers and he has identified us with his own by placing what the holy spirit in our hearts now let me pause before we go on in the reading of this is this new testament or old It's new testament this is an epistle of paul the apostle and he's written to he's writing to people who are already born again who have already received jesus as their lord and savior and therefore is declaring that they have the holy spirit 
within them. Hallelujah. And it says, and the way the Holy Spirit is in, within you, he is there as the first installment that guarantees you everything that God has promised us. King James says it is the earnest of the Spirit. Now, it's, it's a language we actually don't use these days. The earnest of the Spirit. The earnest of the Spirit. It is like a first fruit, a token. An agreement, a contract. Hallelujah. The earnest of the Spirit is, I'm giving you a truckload of yam. I bring the whole truckload of yam and I keep them in your house. But I take about five pieces, five tubers of yam that I've dropped for you, waiting for you in the house. I bring it to you where you are. Let's assume you are at play or at work. So I bring the five tubers. And I give you the five tubers and say, these are your yams. The rest of it is in your house. That five tubers I've given you is a sampling. It's a foretaste. It's for you to understand what is awaiting you. Do you know that the Bible says that he has given each of us a measure of the Spirit? A measure of the Spirit. As much as the Holy Spirit as a person is inside of us, yet we will not see the manifestation of the Spirit in full. The Bible speaks about Jesus as being the only one that has the Holy Spirit without measure so he has given us the measure of the spirit he says he has given every man the measure of faith he has given us the measure of the spirit the foretaste he's giving you all of the spirit but not in this flesh you cannot experience all of the spirit in this flesh hello when we are in our resurrection bodies when we see him as he is the full expression of the holy spirit inside us without limitation without variation we will see it he has given us as the first installment hallelujah let's read the next scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 hallelujah You know how I remember this scripture? It's just like John 3, 16. The scriptures that I can never forget. Hallelujah. Thanks, Beulah. Blessed to have you here as well. That he will grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner man, that Christ may dwell in, in, your hearts by faith and you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth the length and depth and height of god's love and to know the love of christ which passes all knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of god you know what he's saying he's saying that the work of the spirit inside you is to manifest god's love for you to manifest God's love to you and to manifest God, God's love through you. Hallelujah. He's going to dwell in your inner man, giving you the ability to comprehend God's love. Hallelujah. So we are seeing the work of the Holy Spirit in us. First John chapter 4, verse 11. It says, Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love one another. This is New Testament as well. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, then God lives in us. In, in, in us. And his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his Holy Spirit as proof that we live in him and him in us. So these are about the Holy Spirit in us. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. It says, Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God 
dwells in you. Hallelujah. So the spirit of God dwells in you. But then there's a different dimension of the Holy Spirit. Let me use my illustration because the people who are connected online didn't see this. There is water in this unless I open it up and I drink of it. Nobody can contact the water that is in the bottle. It's the same thing with the Holy Spirit in us. Your friends, your neighbors can't contact the Holy Spirit that is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you for you and for you alone. Are you with me? So the work that the Holy Spirit does in you is to grow you, is to establish you in his love. Hallelujah. Is to manifest the presence of God to you. Is to grow your character. Hallelujah. But then, this bottle also has some water all around it by virtue of condensation. It was frozen when it was brought out of the fridge. Water vapor and all of that. So water was all over the bottle. Such that if, if, if I put my hand on it and turn it like this, water would begin to drip. That is what you call water upon it. Now anybody who touches the bottle can contact that water. Because that's the water upon it. It's different from the water within it. It's different from the water in it. And that's why it's not just I have the Holy Spirit. What exactly are you talking about? Are you talking about you have the Holy Spirit in you? Or are you saying you have the Holy Spirit upon you? So let's read what the Bible says. The Holy Spirit upon us. The word upon can be translated to anoint. It can be translated to smear upon. It can be translated to rub all over. It can be translated to cover with. It can be translated to baptize into. That's to immerse into. It can also be translated to be under the influence of or to be influenced by. Are you with me? It can also be translated to come under the power of. Now let's see what it says. Notice when we read about the Holy Spirit in us, he started speaking about character. He started speaking about knowing the love of God. He started speaking about the ability to walk in his statues. So he speaks about a reformation of your spirit. He speaks about your contacting the things that change the nature of who you are. So the spirit inside you deals with you. Hallelujah. It deals with you. It builds you. It gives you capacity. Helps you to understand the word of God. Helps you to live in accordance to his word. But look at Joel chapter 2. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit in all flesh. Upon all flesh. It's not a mistake. Upon all flesh. What's the result? And your sons... And your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And also upon my servants and upon the handmaidens in those days, I will pour out my spirit. And I will, as a result, show wonders in the heavens and the earth. You see, in the old covenant, nobody could have the Holy Spirit in them. But some people were able to have the Holy Spirit upon them. To have the Holy Spirit in you means your spirit has been recreated. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. Which the world cannot receive. Which the world cannot receive. Listen, being born again is about having a new heart. Being born again is about having the Holy Spirit within us. Some people tend to think being born again is adhering to a code of conduct. The world can adhere to a code of conduct. They can try. But it, will not be, it wouldn't be an outward manifestation of an inward experience. Yeah. It would just be they are following some code by force. Yeah. Hallelujah. So what makes you born again is not that you have obeyed all commandments. No. 
What makes you born again is that you are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Your spirit is a brand new man. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says the world cannot receive it. But as per the Holy Spirit upon you, the Holy Spirit upon you is for function. It's for the people around you. Is there somebody hearing what I'm saying? It's for function. And everybody that contacts you, if the Holy Spirit is upon you, will contact that Holy Spirit. It didn't begin in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit being upon us. As a matter of fact, if you look into scriptures, it's everywhere. And the Spirit of God came upon Daniel. And the Spirit of God came upon this prophet. And the Spirit of God is all over the Old Testament. All over it. The prophets, the kings, and the priests in particular would have the Spirit of God come upon. Whenever God chose anybody for a function or a purpose, he would place the Holy Spirit upon that person. Yes, sir. In other words, the Holy Spirit upon was to enable you to perform a particular function. Hallelujah. And this is where, if we are not careful, we will jumble it all together. Go and look for a minstrel who has the Spirit. What did you exactly mean? They went and they fetched David. Am I right? But David didn't have the Spirit in him. He had the spirit upon him to play. Hallelujah. Look at Numbers chapter 11 verse 17. And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take of the spirit which is upon thee. He's talking to Moses. And I will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the work with thee. So that thou bear it not alone. He was telling Moses that these guys... I want them to support you. I want them to do this work with you. I want them to carry this burden with you. But if they are going to do it, I'm going to take off the spirit upon you. Moses didn't have the spirit in him. He had the spirit upon him. He says, I'll take off the spirit that is upon you and I'll put it upon them also. Hallelujah. I am preaching. I am teaching because the Holy Spirit is upon me to teach hallelujah i am a christian because the holy spirit is in me to grow i grow by the work of the spirit in me i perform i minister by the spirit of god upon me water is water is the same holy spirit but there's a difference between the water in this bottle and the water upon this bottle is there somebody getting my point it's a huge difference the water because my hand is all over this one the water upon the bottle is not sterile it's not clean anymore i've put all kinds of germs in it but it's still water it's still h2o though the water inside is clean it's nice and it's drinkable hallelujah imagine if we pass this water to everybody in this room and Dr. David touched it. Dr. Rosemary touched it. Mr. Conley touched it. Amorola touched it. Esther licked it. <laughs> <laughs> J-Boy kicked it. So we've contaminated that water somewhat, isn't it? But it's still water. We can't use it for the same purpose. Everybody, nobody will be eager to drink it. Am I right? But it's still water. That's the same with the Holy Spirit. Most evangelicals don't understand this. That there's a difference between the work of the Holy Spirit in you and the work of the Holy Spirit upon you. Judges chapter 4 verse 19. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ascalon and slew 30 men of them. Gege. In other words, it helps you to do the supernatural. Let's read from 1 Samuel 10 verse 6. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou will prophesy with them, and you will be turned into another man. And let it be that when these signs shall come upon you, you shall do as the occasion serves you. For the Lord God is with you. God spoke to me. 
by this. Is there somebody here what I'm saying? Yes, said the spirit of the Lord is upon you and you will be turned into another man. Somebody out there like Moses is saying, I don't know how to talk. What will I say when I get there? For you know I'm a stammering man. God says, chill. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. I'm not a fighter. He says, chill. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. I, 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 I'm, 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 I can tend to doubt. He says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. In other words, the Holy Spirit will enable you to do the things you could not do normally. Wow. You could not do naturally. Yeah. Somebody is putting a comment. Huh? I don't see you. Okay, Omolola says, how do you get the Holy Spirit in the first place? We'll get there. <laughs> Hallelujah. But actually, I've already told you how to get the Holy Spirit in you. So does anybody want to answer that question? How do you get the Holy Spirit in you? Yep, J-Boy. Get born again. That's it. Sorry? Once you get born again, the Holy Spirit is in you. All things have passed away. All things have become new. You have become a new creature in Christ. Do you get that? Believe in the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. That's how to get the Holy Spirit in you. The next question is, how do you get the Holy Spirit upon you? We'll get there. All right? Pastor Anne says, what makes you born again is that you are a new creature. All things have passed away. You see, she's answering your question all the way from Abuja. Amanda says, the spirit is upon you for function. It is for influence. Santa Kabarudia. Absolutely. The Holy Spirit is upon us to help you accomplish an assignment. Yes, sir. And Lagos Center says, Thank God for we have the advantage of the Holy Spirit both within us and upon us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Are you getting it? So look at what the Holy Spirit upon you does. The Holy Spirit upon you turns you into another man. It gives you the ability to function in the supernatural. It creates signs and wonders. It says when these signs have come to pass, then do this is the one that blessed me this is the whisper god put in my heart he said look listen you are adequate you are beautiful for situations mm. <laughs> hey! do you know we sing that song for jesus beautiful for situations you're the joy of the whole earth is mount zion the sides of the north do you know what beautiful for situations mean it means no matter what god allows to come to you you have what it takes to meet that situation that's what beautiful for situation means and how are we beautiful for situation the same way jesus is beautiful for situation he did it by the holy spirit that was upon him and it's the same we do it by the holy spirit that is upon us hallelujah so i realize that there's nothing that he's going to allow no temptation that God will allow. No situation that God will allow. That God himself will not anoint me. Will not place his spirit upon me to deal with that situation. There was a prophet that the spirit came upon him and he ran faster than a chariot of horses. Hey! Shambakolobrinamai. Moses and the Israelites got to the edge of the dead sea and the israelites i mean the egyptians were coming behind in their chariots and spears and horses i mean it was a dead end water in front army behind but the holy spirit came upon him he stretched out his rod and the sea parted you will be turned into another man in the mighty name of jesus you will be turned into another man don't go where god didn't send you Somebody lied on his CV <laughs> and experienced project manager in IT. 
have designed the user interface ux of many this this and that so he gets into the place of work and they say yeah i want you to redesign the ux for this program then the guy um um, um okay so he starts to speak in tongues god i am beautiful for situation oh, not life you are not beautiful for that god didn't send you there <laughs> you sent yourself is somebody getting what i'm saying yeah uh, hey, it doesn't work like that you know i i i i identify as a woman me so i identify as a woman oh yeah bump picking make me see come on go give birth let's see get pregnant i mean i can't do it there's no speaking in tongues that's going to do that because god didn't ordain it so hallelujah the bible says he gives these manifestations of the spirit severally to each man as he wills as he wills so stay within his purpose hallelujah let's go to the next verse next scripture acts chapter 1 verse 8 so we want to see upon somebody say upon it says but you shall receive power after the holy ghost is come what upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and judea and samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the world so the ability the capacity to witness the capacity to demonstrate jesus the capacity to walk in the spirit of conviction is a work of the holy spirit upon you it's a work of the holy spirit upon you but you shall receive power capacity dynamis power somebody say i'm beautiful for situations ah, i wish it will bless you like it blessed me in other words everything that you will need in australia god himself will work it by the spirit of god upon you every favor every grace you will walk into places and by god's anointing some people will tell you i don't know why i'm doing this i had reserved this house for someone else but i just i just there's something about you is the holy spirit upon you is there somebody here what i'm saying beautiful for situations beautiful for situations dr rosemary you will get the job of a consultant and then they will wait for you to regularize at your own pace you know why because you are beautiful for situations you have lost nothing they'll take you in there they will see your capacity they will put you in position to function as such and then you will do it at your pace mark my words that i speak as a prophet hallelujah Isaiah chapter 61. Let's see the Holy Spirit upon, 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 upon. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has what? Anointed. So you see that the work of the Holy Spirit upon you is a matter of anointing. He has anointed, smeared all over me. He has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives the opening of the prison doors to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord the year of jubilee and the day of vengeance of our god there's an anointing to comfort to comfort all that mourn hey there's an anointing to appoint that's what just manifested here say this to my daughter build the faith in her let her know she's beautiful for situations are you believing for a house because i'm running away from it i want to turn and say receive that new house in the name of jesus and then i turn away receive that new house in the name of jesus there's an anointing to appoint 
we were driving out of our house this morning. You remember what I said, darling? I said, this new house is better than the one we've come from. I didn't think there was a house better than it's more suited for me. I didn't think so. Because I can't climb stairs, I felt, look, that house was just it. But I had a house that half of the house I had never seen. Three years, I never went upstairs. I never saw what the bedrooms were like. I didn't have access to the entire house for three years that we were there. Now I'm in a house, I have access to every room in the house. And it's so much better. I mean, you came in there, you saw what the carpet is like, the environment. See my small corner that I carved for myself in the living room as my studio. Eh? Everything just te -te 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 -te. I mean, the kitchen. Oh my goodness, the kitchen. Ah, clean! <laughs> but when we were looking, we thought it was impossible. We were so frustrated and this and that. And yet God presented it to us. And we are paying less beautiful for situations there's an anointing to appoint to appoint unto them that more to give unto them beauty for ashes and the oil of mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and they shall build there's an anointing to build the waste places they shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations. It says, but you will be named the priests of the Lord. And men shall call you the ministers. There's an anointing to minister. The minister of our God, you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. Hey, accelerated. That's what I prayed, isn't it? Accelerated. This scripture is for you. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles accelerated you shall eat the riches of the gentiles some people will come around you and advise you they will tell you it's not easy in this uh, in this country it will take you five years to get to this ten years to get to that it will not be so for you accelerated you will eat the riches of the gentiles i say again you shall eat the riches of the gentiles and in their glory you will boast yourself. For your shame you will have double. For your confusion you will rejoice in your portion. Therefore, in your lands you will possess double. And everlasting joy will be your portion. Hallelujah. Man Bahaya. Yes, Pastor Martha says, we receive beauty for ashes. Yes, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Upon is equal to anointing. Yes, Pastor Anne. Hallelujah. Oh, Rakaparo no Mosom Palo Brady, Sister Kai. Now, this is where it gets complicated. Now, everybody look at me. You see, if it was just the spirit in you, the spirit upon you, it's as, it's as simple as mathematics. But what about when he now says, and Peter being filled with the holy spirit said unto them this is what throws in confusion into the mix because when you say filled with the spirit you think it is saying that he poured the spirit inside that's what normal english language would indicate and so 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 filled with the spirit rose up and said but when you look at that scripture in terms of upon and in you realize he couldn't be talking about the spirit in him and so 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 filled with the spirit prophesied and so 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 filled with the spirit went and did this so it's not to do with his own growth and himself it's to do with other people so you know technically saying filled with the spirit is actually talking about the spirit upon then why would they say filled why throw in this confusion so i went and looked at it the word is the word pletho it means to imbue it means to influence it means to supply it means to fulfill as in terms of time it means to accomplish it means to feel to fulfill to accomplish in other words it actually wasn't talking about inside at all hello 
when he says and so 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 filled with the spirit it simply means and so 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 coming under the influence of the spirit hallelujah let me give you an example so you see ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 and 21 and be not drunk with wine wherein in, in his excess but be ye filled with the spirit speaking to yourselves so it's not to me it's not me speaking to me it's me speaking to i dated you it's me speaking to david speaking to yourselves not speaking to yourself is somebody getting that speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord giving thanks always for all things and the father in the name of our lord jesus christ submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of god and you say ah, but it's actually looking like the spirit in us because there's character in there submission for example is an act of character okay. when, when i was looking at this you know what the holy spirit showed me he said i spoke concerning the spirit and he said the spirit will be in you as a well of water springing up unto everlasting life How, is it not written and of you shall flow rivers of living water so even from the overflow of the spirit in you you can have a bubbling forth and a bubbling out that turns you under the influence of the holy spirit and this is not just the normal walking in the spirit does anybody know what walking in the spirit is walking in the spirit is when your heart takes control of your mind and your body that is when the spirit takes preeminence hallelujah so you are not obeying the promptings of the flesh but you are obeying the promptings of the spirit you say you are walking in the spirit if you walk in the spirit you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh hallelujah so this one is not just normal walking in the spirit this is you triggering things such that the work of the holy spirit in you can actually bubble out and flow and be a blessing to others around you be ye being filled and you know it implies that it's not happening all the time hello Hi. it's something you can make happen oh lord i want to be filled again and again i want to be filled look at acts chapter 2 verse 4 and everyone present was filled with the holy ghost and began speaking with tongues as the holy spirit gave them utterance. this one is clear and obvious that he's speaking about the holy spirit upon not within yet it uses the same word filled with the spirit how how Omorala, this is your question how how do we get filled how do we come under the influence of the Holy Spirit? How do we get into that place where the Holy Spirit, you know, just bubbles up on the inside of us and I'm under his influence? I, I, I'm, he doesn't possess anybody, but he can get you drunk. Be not drunk with wine, but be ye filled. He's contrasting the two. Do you remember on the day of Pentecost? The Bible says some people were looking at them and at the way they were behaving and were accusing them of being drunk. Hello? And then Peter had to get up and say, this is not drunk. It looks to you like somebody that is drunk because they are not behaving naturally. He says this is actually the infilling of the Holy Spirit. This is, they are being filled. Just came up and yet it was the Holy Ghost that came upon them. So you see when he's talking about feeling he could be talking about the work of the spirit in you he could be talking about the work of the spirit upon you but he's saying that you come under the dramatic influence of the holy spirit hallelujah how can you make that happen number one praying in the spirit it's funny that when you start to pray in the spirit you start in the flesh hello you are not in the spirit 
John the Apostle says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. The Lord's day is Sunday. Okay? So he was saying, I was in the spirit on Sunday. It doesn't mean every, every Sunday he's in the spirit. In that particular instance, something happened that turned the trigger and he came under the influence of the Holy Spirit and suddenly the Lord started showing him visions. How can we precipitate that? How can we make that happen? One way is by praying in the spirit. And tarry long at the wine. When you start to pray in the spirit, sometimes you are in the flesh. You are still conscious of the flesh. You are looking at your time. You are, you are tempted to pick up your phone. You are looking at who has texted you. You are looking at uh, where is he? Where is she? Uh, you are hungry. Uh, you, this one is eating you. I want to go and use the bathroom. And, and so on and so forth. What, what's so, so, so doing? Forget about what somebody else is doing. Tarry. If you starry long at the wine. If you continue to pray in the spirit, you will kick into gear where you lose consciousness of what's going around you. When you are literally transformed into another man, all of a sudden you are there and you know you are there. Is there somebody here what I'm saying? Tarry long enough at the wine. And the devil is a liar and he's a, he's a crazy fool. He won't let you get there. Say, what's all this one you are doing? You are just making noise. You really want to deceive yourself that you are in the spirit. What's all this? I beg. And if you are not careful, you back off. You've been doing it for 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes. Is that, and you say, what has happened now? All this time you have been praying. What is all this time? Tarry long at the wine. Turn to your neighbor say, tarry long at the wine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another way is attending to the word. Have you ever been in such a Bible study? You are meditating the word. You are immersed into it. You are picturing it. You are growing. You know, one day I decided I wanted to start from Genesis and read all the way to Revelations. I didn't get past Genesis chapter 2. 2. I'm telling you, when I came under the influence of the Holy Ghost, all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm studying, I read verse 2, he will trigger me to another verse in Hosea, to another verse in Daniel, and then to another one in Ephesians, and I'm still studying and I'm writing and I'm writing. When we were uh, tidying up the room and arranging my stuff, I was showing you those diaries. And I said, there are so many powerful messages in each of those diaries. I cannot throw them away. Some of them was 1981. Some of them was 1989. Do you understand what I'm saying? Of those times I came, I was filled with the Holy Spirit as I studied the word. And all of a sudden, God is pouring out. And he's pouring out. Tarry long at the way. It doesn't come with five minutes Bible study. And it doesn't come by scripture memorization. Can I say it again? It doesn't come by memory verse. It comes by meditating. My son, attend to my word. Incline your ears unto my saying. For they are what? Life unto those that find them. Stay long enough to find it. Find it. Find it. Hallelujah. Another way that you can precipitate it is to set your affections on the things of God. A step back from the things of the flesh for a moment. Shut down everything and focus on God. Tell your neighbor again, tarry long at the wine. Another way, and I know this has happened to almost every one of us, is sincere worship. I'm not talking about boogaloo worship. Oh. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Eh, eh, ah, eh. That, that's not worship. Let's be, let's be honest. Nothing wrong with dance. Any dance you are dancing that you are conscious of who is looking at you, you are not here in the spirit. Mm. Eh, eh, eh. That's, <laughs> you are gesticulating for people. Hallelujah. Ah, look. Uh, 1989. Yeah, it was 1989. Fire conference. We had Bishop Fred Addo. 
Then he was Reverend Fred Ado, not yet bishop. And Reverend Dr. Philip Paul Mukunga came to minister in Zaria. I was doing my master's at the time and I was head of the organizing team. I was working under Reverend Mrs. Ishaya Aldo and Daddy Aldo. And these two men of God came to minister. I remember one of the afternoons, Bishop Fred Ado was to preach in the evening. And I was organizing the protocol that was to take the food to his room. So I came to check that he was ready. As I approached the room, I started hearing him praying in tongues. Hey, I can't describe what I heard to you. <laughs> it wasn't normal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Man, this, he was in the spirit. And then the way he was moving, he would jump up. Is this very abnormal? Very much in the spirit. He didn't know I was there. I stood there. I almost peed myself. It wasn't fear as in terror. It was in fear as in reverence. I was there. I was shaking. The same way Moses felt when, when, when he, was, he saw the burning bush and said, take the shoes off your feet for you are on holy ground. That evening, this young man that now plays bass with Panam, he was healed. One leg was short. He was walking with crutches. That was the night he was healed. There was a man totally blind. You know when he's blind, and you see these cars, this white looking thing on, on their eyeball, completely healed. I mean, we were seeing miracles like something else. Because somebody was filled with the spirit. Then the next day I went and I saw Reverend Philip do exactly the same thing when he was praying. After that, I didn't go to their room again. You know, there was no mobile phone then. We are talking about 1989. I couldn't call somebody's phone and say, can I come? So I stood and said, if you want to drop food, just go. You are getting closer and you are shaking. That was what it was. When Reverend Philip stood up, to pray. He has not even said a word. He just stood there and a holy presence hit the whole auditorium. People started dropping on their face. People just started and he didn't say a word for 15 minutes. People just started. Some people were weeping. Some were crying. I was on the floor. Flat on the floor. Just the presence. The holy presence of God. Because somebody dared to tarry long at the wine sincere worship can do that worship can get to a place where the bible says that the priest could not even minister the levites couldn't play the harp couldn't do anything it was just a holy presence and sometimes the spirit will come upon you and you will play what you didn't know how to play many of my songs came that way many of them hallelujah Because you tarried long at the wine. So lollipop, how do you get the spirit of God upon you? You get the spirit of God upon you by somebody laying hands on you or by you the same way you gave your life to Christ to say, God, let the Holy Spirit come upon me. I open my heart and my life. I'm willing and ready to speak in tongues. Because that is one of the evidence that you are speaking. That is the consistent one we see again and again and again in the book of Acts. And in the letters of Paul. Hallelujah. And receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And he will come upon you. And when the Spirit has come upon you, it's permanent. But you have to activate it by being filled. Again and again, tarry long at the wine, and you will come under that holy influence. Hallelujah. That breaks yokes, shatters shackles, apportions and distributes. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. 
to finish this, what have we spoken about today? We spoke about the spirit upon, and the spirit of God produces, the spirit of God upon us produces the gifts of the spirit. The spirit of God within us produces the fruit of the spirit. Being filled means to be under the influence of. And when he says he has given us the earnest of the spirit, he's telling us that there is greater to come when we get to heaven. Mm. Hallelujah. When we take on our resurrection bodies, mm. there is greater to come. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. God is inviting us to tarry long at the wine. He's inviting us to tarry long at the wine. Whether it is at the feet of his word or it's in the presence of the Lord in worship, tarry long at the wine. Wait on the Lord until, until, Father, thank you for the higher call. Now I'm here to encourage you and to challenge you to release that which is in your hand that we may see the outpouring of that which is in God's hand. Every time that I cry, you hear Because God is faithful. And no matter the Every times day, that we we'll find ourselves in, when I pray, we have a reason to rejoice because our God delivers us from you every affliction. Me. Every time when I call for help, you're there for me. And because we trust Him, we come to Him with confidence. And it's a time to give. And you woke me up this morning. We give first of all because we honor the Lord, because He's our Lord. Now may He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. I am grateful. You've been so faithful. You've been so faithful to me. You have been faithful. to God not out of compulsion some people think that at a time of pressure is a time when you hoard and you hold back it's a time to keep because you don't know what would happen but I challenge you when you dare to release your faith to give unto God you are giving God an opportunity to manifest when you die what can I say in psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want it means it takes submission to his lordship to connect with his care you have been faithful I want to encourage you right now to join us if you are persuaded to do so. Give right now and uh, as I speak, uh, the number and the account details is being scrolled through your screen. Pick up your device. Oh, I know it's already with you. Make that transfer now and God will bless you in the name of Jesus. so tremendously blessed in this service my life will never remain the same i know 
the same is with you also wherever you are watching us from now before you go don't forget like our facebook page and every time you connect go a step further to share that page to your friends and on your, on your own timeline so you help us take this service further and help many more people to connect with us faster thank you so much till we'll see you next time god bless you